today we're going to be looking at the bubble sort algorithm. Now the bubble sort algorithm is a very simple algorithm that can be used and implemented very quickly um, that will sort out a list. All right, so we're going to take a look at it here and I'm going to kind of just describe how it works and then what I'll do is and then I'll go and look at how it's coded. All right, so we start off with what I'm using in my example here is a, just a size six array. I have the array element numbers. Okay, so the addresses listed on the top and the bottom. And I'll explain why, why they're both top and bottom in just a minute. And then I have the elements here. So our list uh, would look like four, six, two, one, three, five. All right, we're gonna, I don't wanna demonstrate on such a, like a very large uh, array because it will just take forever. Okay, even the size six will take a little bit of time, but hopefully you'll get the gist of it here. Now, the way we start off is with a reference marker. Now, I know it's an arrow, it's not a pointer, it's a marker, all right? So this usually is represented using an integer and it's meant to reference this array element, okay? The, L, the address number, not the element like the four, it's ad referencing the zero, all right? Then we have a comparison and the comparison is also accessing just the address number. So this comparison is accessing element number one right it's also an integer usually all right so what we do is we basically have uh, we ask a question and then we say is the reference uh, less than the comparison right and if it's not then we do a switch okay so is six are these two in the right position relative to one another okay yes they are right so what we do is then the comparison moves over to here Okay, the reference stays the same. And now we say, okay, well, how about these two? And of course they're not. Okay, so what happens is we actually do a simple switch. Right, so then the two goes over here and the four goes over here. All right, the comparison then moves on. Now, if you notice now, the two and the four, so the reference and the comparison uh, have the element at number, so, so the two and the four have been switched, but the arrows didn't switch, okay? They stay the same. All right, so move on here. All right, and now are these two in the same in the correct position relative to one another? Uh, no, so what we do is we move one down here to here, so we do a simple switch algorithm, a swap algorithm again. All right, and then we go on. Okay, how about here? No here no and we're done okay so at this point the only element that we're sure that is correct is the very first element okay so what we do is we start again okay we start again but this time we move the reference up to here okay because we are convinced now or we're sure that element zero is the correct element right the comparison has to also reset now, it was here before at the beginning, but the comparison obviously doesn't make sense to compare the same object or the same, the same element. So the comparison always starts at the one over. All right, and we do the same thing. Now, is six uh, in the right spot relative to four? No. Okay, so that has to be moved over. All right, we continue on. Comparison moves over like so. Okay, and two is not correct relative to four. Okay, so four needs to be moved over, two needs to be, go here. All right, and we just continue on. Okay, so how about three? That's, that's okay, five, that's okay. We're done this iteration. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna move this over again. Okay, so now this one goes here. Now remember, the comparison always starts not at the same place as the reference, but one over from the reference. All right, so six and four again need to are not correct relative to each other. Okay, so six and four. Comparison is going to move on to three. Oh, okay, that's got to be okay. So the three is in the four are not in the correct spots. Okay, and you can see that things are kind of starting to take shape here. Okay, we'll just go a little bit further. Okay, comparison goes to five. Okay, that's correct. All right, we start again. Reference moves up. Comparison moves over to the one beside the reference. 
And you can see what basically as we go, um, this is going to become a little like faster and faster because there's fewer comparisons and fewer elements to compare as we as we go on. All right, so four and six once again are not in the correct position relative to each other. Okay, so those go like so. Comparison moves over here. That's okay. Reference moves up. Comparison stays in the same spot, okay, in this case, because it always starts one next to it. Six and five are not correct. Okay, it should be five, six, like so. Now, here's what, where things uh, get a little bit um, interesting, is that basically the algorithm ends here. Okay, the reason why the algorithm has to end here is because we are on the second last element. And if you went one further, okay, when you reset, right, the reference has to go here, which is fine, but the comparison has to start over here, which is out of bounds, right? So that's not allowed, right? So this is the last step. Okay, so what does the coding look like? Well, um, the first thing we need to do is we have to set up something to represent this reference. Right now, this reference is usually, as I mentioned, an integer. Right, it's an integer that needs to cycle through these element addresses, and it has to go from here to the second last element. All right, so if we're talking about an array of size n, then this reference has to go from zero to n minus one. All right, so it cannot go to, so it can't, it can't go to five. It has to go to four. All right. We usually use a loop, okay? Usually a for loop for this, right? Because a for loop is actually just almost perfectly suited for this. All right, now within that, okay, there is another for loop, right? And that's the comparison loop, right? So the comparison goes, and it always has to start one ahead of the reference, okay? So whatever the reference is, the comparison has to start one ahead of it. And the comparison, though, Okay, the reference cannot go to the end of the list, but the comparison has to go to the end of the list. All right, and then when within that, okay, it starts here, we do a comparison, so there's an if statement there, and if these two are not in the correct position relative to each other, there's a swap algorithm that just swaps the two values, and that's pretty much it. The whole bubble sort is essentially, I don't want to give the code for it right here because uh, this is just an explanation of what it is. Okay, but the whole bubble sort is probably like for sure less than 10 lines, depending on how your scope brackets look, but probably, I don't know, six lines long, something like that. It's relatively short, okay, and can be written really quickly. All right, as for performance of the bubble sort algorithm, the bubble sort algorithm is very slow, right? It doesn't go fast at all, but it is pretty reliable, right? Like, and, and one thing that's to its advantage is it's very easy to program, right? So if you're doing something simple, bubble sort is just an easy sort that you can whip out, you know, just pretty fast and get that done, all right? Um, Overall, um, one, th one question that always comes out is why it's called the bubble sort, and I believe that the reason why, and I could be wrong about this, but I believe the reason why is because what you have is like, like you have to imagine you had like a jar and it's filled with different uh, densities of liquids, right? So if you just sat it there, they'd all be kind of stacked one on top of it. They'd look like they were stacked one on top of the other because they would sort themselves out by density. But if you shook the jar, all the liquids would kind of go all over the place and you'd see the heavier liquids bubble to the bottom and the, the, the uh, lighter liquids would bubble to the top after you set it down. And that's kind of what you see with the numbers. The, the heavier numbers are, are drifting to the left or to the right and the lighter numbers are drifting to the left. All right. And so that's why it's referred to as the bubble sort. All right. Well, that's it for the bubble sort pretty much. It's a pretty simple one to implement. And yeah, if you have any questions about it, leave a question um, in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.